Hey guys, it's Coach Door with Tactical Hive. And today we're gonna talk about gas masks and mop gear. Stay tuned. Hey, today's video. Hey, today's video is brought to us by Dry Fire Mag. We use Dry Fire Mags here at the channel, and we also use them at my last job. If you're living in a striker fire world, having to cock the slide and take the shot every time builds training scars and it just makes training less efficient. So go ahead and pick yourself up one of these. This is the Dry Fire Mag. It is adjustable to match your particular platforms trigger pull, but if you go ahead, just inserts like a regular mag, make sure your weapon's cocked, ready to go, and it just resets your trigger every time. So instead of having to rack every time, this dry fire mag just resets, resets, and uh, man, it really makes training that much more efficient. So go ahead and check them out in the link below, and make sure to use code TACHIVE at checkout for 10 bucks off. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> All right, guys, so gas masks. Um, they are a little over 100 years old as far as military application, as far as I know. The Germans decided it'd be a good idea to start throwing death clouds around the battle space um, back in the uh, 19-teens. Yeah, a little mustard. Yeah, little you, know, you know, you know, a little spice of life, you know? And uh, so gas masks, of course, followed suit. All the major powers had them. It was, they were playing catch up very, very quickly. The early ones were pretty crude, but I mean, by the time America so got was the over, threat. the threat yeah, so was basically, the threat, yeah. you know, any mucous membrane mm -hmm. and, uh, and your lungs especially, mm -hmm. blister your lungs and you die. So they were able to start getting gas masks out onto the battlefield. And the biggest thing you needed to be able to do with that thing was fight. And fighting back then predominantly was rifle, you know, rifle marksmanship. So mm -hmm. if you look at the older pictures, you'll see them, you know, able to lock in and get that sight picture on the rifle. And that was really the only measure of success other than it working. Yeah, but not dying, uh, I think is probably yeah. the, the, the best Oh thing. yeah, as long as it yeah. worked, you didn't die. Um, you know, they were crude, they were hard to breathe in, they were hard to fight in, but it was just a horrible situation all around, made worse by uh, the fact that now you have to wear this stuff. For those of you that have worn it, you know the wearing it sucks, but so does dying from not wearing it. So you generally, you generally just wear it. And honestly, you're gonna use gas tactically in mm -hmm. the offense. Mm -hmm. So you throw a bunch of gas out there, let your, you know, mess up your, your enemy, and then you charge him after the gas dissipates. And of course you got gas masks on yourself, right? So being able to don a gas mask and repel that attack, yeah, that was the goal. That was the goal. Um, and so, not die. Yeah, not die. <laughs> I promise I won't die yeah. from gas because I'm aware of this. Anywho, so moving forward into World War II, you know, treaties had been signed. Not that anybody cared, but Hitler, being a World War I combat veteran, absolutely hated and disdained gas. He saw what it did, and he was hell-bent on not using it. And uh, that's what kept Europe safe from that realm of horror. Yeah, he fact, used the gas on, you know, just... Yeah, he gassed the hell out of people in the in the concentration camps. Yeah. Let's not, I'm not trying to say it was just a Just not on the battlefield. Yeah. He was just let's, using... Let's not advocate here. Let's, let's be clear. Yeah. But... Um, We're not a fan of Hitler. Yeah, not a fan here. But as far as combat use, he didn't see any. And it's been historically known that he just would not do it. And nobody else wanted to pull the trigger on it either. You go out to the Pacific where the enemy out there had no qualms of doing anything to anybody. But mm. if you look at it from a tactical standpoint, they are the ones that were dug in. Yeah. They are the ones on defense. So if they had brought you know, any kind of WMD or gas into the equation, we could have just sat off on our ships and just bombarded them with gas. And it's very hard, if not impossible, to defend a static position from a gas attack. You can't live in a gas mask forever. The filters are gonna wear out. I mean, you have to eat, you have to sleep. It's just not sustainable. So it was in their best interest to keep it a WMD free war as well. Moving forward into the uh, Korean conflict, I think the old school rules still applied. 
Yeah, there, I don't think there was any uh, any big gas attacks. Yeah, but the, the but the gear did get better. Obviously, what they were using in World War II was way better than World War One. Uh, Korea was fought with World War II surplus with very little innovation. But when you get to the Vietnam conflict, they started using CS gas um, in tactical in the tactical space. And CS gas is basically just an aerosol, almost smoke. Yeah, it's not that, deadly. That uh, is just, pepper spray. You just wish you were dead. Yeah, it's basically an aerosol smoke version of pepper spray. It does the exact same thing. Anybody who goes through a United States military boot camp or most federal law enforcement academies and training pr programs also pepper spray or CS gas their recruits just to give them that fam. But uh, it is very, it sucks. It's, it's not pleasurable oh, yeah. and it does make getting anything done almost impossible, especially fighting. So it was used uh, during the Vietnam conflict, which we like to start with on these gear videos because that's where SEAL Team kind of got their start. And they did so with uh, this bad boy right here, Coach. Yeah, we had to look it up, but uh, this is the, uh, the M17. Um, so this one was the first one I got issued. So it's the same damn one that uh, the Vietnam guys had. So it's like like Korea was World War II vintage yeah. stuff uh, in the '80s. We were a lot of stuff we were working with was uh, Vietnam uh, vintage. And uh, let me tell you, this thing you got a little, uh, little deal. You could uh, you know put this in your uh, canteen so you could drink while you had this on here. Donning it was a pain in the ass. Um, you wore it in one of these in this pouch here. What kind of wrap around your waist and hang on your leg. And the only time we ever wore them was when we knew we were gonna get gassed by our training cadre. Because- God bless them. Yeah. So the idea here was not just, you know, to torture your guys. It was to um, introduce stress. So combat stress, somebody's shooting at you. That's kind of stressful but you can't really duplicate that by shooting at your guys, right? So you add something in the air and add that CS in there, and boy, that that's stress. Let me tell you, you don't want to get caught in that stuff. It is gnarly. It clears out your sciences, though. It's, you know, it's good for that. So these first masks, you know, you, you could do a little bit with them. Uh, the filters are actually in the cheeks. So to change them out, you gotta take the thing out, undo th this little pouch and pull the things out of there. Um, and under any kind of stress, you know, when you're breathing hard and running and all that, this thing just sucks down to your face and you can barely see anything, it fogs up. Uh, you know, and it's like breathing through, uh, uh, like breathing through a cocktail straw, you yeah, know? So it's not the deal. Take, you know, you wanna know what it's like, take two cocktail straws, put it in your mouth like this and start doing wind sprints, just breathing through the, the, the straws. You know, it, it, you go hypoxic pretty quick. Um, we do uh, a FAM with CS gas uh, with the students. And then I'd never got that though when I was in, uh, in BUDS. The first time I experienced CS gas, I had to put one of these on and we were doing live fire immediate action drills. Mm. So all fogged up, shooting real bullets with people running around. Yeah. So Good times. We've gotten better since then. Yes, <laughs> I'm just amazed nobody got uh, got dinged on that one. But yeah, this was um, this is what we had. Uh, it was not very good and wasn't really, there was no real prep for someone actually using gas on you, okay? Uh, you had the hoods that came along with this and, and everything else, but we never used them. This was just, you know, you, you put this on when we go get a gas attack, uh, you know, for your immediate action drill. Now, as we move on, mm -hmm. the next time I had to deal with it, when we were, when I was at uh, uh, Gold Squadron, we got bugs and gas, okay? So there was that threat out there. There were people on the world stage using it against their own people. So, you know, Saddam Hussein, uh, dickhead in Syria, you know, it got real and the gas was no joke. It was way more effective than anything that they had uh, in World War I. I mean, this is, you know, VX and Taboon and, you know, all the different stuff. We had to look through it and, you know, know what it was, you know, and, and, and the, the, the effects, yeah, just horrible. You know, it's like you wish you could uninvent something 
you know, this, these things were so bad. But we figured, okay, there is that possibility. So we're going to have to figure out how to mitigate it. So we went and we moved on. This is, uh, I'm not sure what model this mask was, but this is the one that I was wearing. So this one is just set up with uh, the filter on it here like this. And it was, even as it sits, it did a whole lot better. The gas mask, the uh, filter on this side, you could put it on either side, depending on what hand you're gonna shoot your gun with. So you're a lot smoother here, so you could actually get behind uh, your, your sight. And you would have to cant your head over a little bit, maybe cant the gun, whatever, but you know, you're still safe. This would also come with a hood and everything else that, uh, that this one's set up. But just, if you weren't expecting it, you could wear something like this, have this on you at all times. We also had uh, this uh, mop gear, which is just charcoal impregnated, uh, you know, a uniform that would go over everything. And yeah, of course- It's really kind of like a trouser. Y yeah, you got- <clears throat> Almost like a overall. You got overalls there. <clears throat> and then this goes over the top. So that would go on your top. Yeah, and just wear your kit right over the top of it. So anything that, that got, you know, uh, got on this would stay on the outside. Uh, the charcoal absorbs some stuff. Um, you know, one of the reasons I kept this is because it's charcoal impregnated. Uh, you can go hunting in it and the deer can't smell you. One of our jobs at Gold Squadron was to go on the, uh, the, uh, the bug and gas hunt. So a lot of the mission sets that we did uh, in Iraq early on where we were hitting suspected WMD uh, positions. And when you do that, you have your mop gear, you're, you're all mopped up, ready to go. You do want to win the lead fight first. So you didn't go run around with the whole mop gear on, but you mm -hmm. had your suit on and you had your mask all set up. Now, if you're gonna do any kind of physical activity with this on, you're gonna need uh, a blower. Okay, so uh, Dor will show you how his, uh, his setup was. Um, for me, we had this set up on my kit here. So I'd have the mop gear on and then I'd have this on here. So mask went in here mm -hmm. and the hose would come on out and come around and we had these clips right here on the back. So I would clip in, my blower would sit right here. And you have, you got the blower. two filters. And when you turn that sucker on, it's like, it forces that air in and you can actually, uh, you know, be a bit athletic, you know? You could run around and it, you, you wouldn't over the rig. Now, we'd have that set up ready to go. Once you cleared the area and once you went into the space where the suspected WMD was, that's when you got all mopped up and, uh, and went and checked it out. You know, if we got hit on the way in, I mean, we never did, obviously, but, you know, the, if the threat's there, you know, you got to prep for it. And this was our prep. Mm -hmm. Now, if you did take a hit, you had these little kits, uh, atropine and two-pan chloride. So somebody takes a hit, you start shooting these into the big thigh muscle. Yeah. Atropine. Uh, you do not direct. You do not inject it directly into your heart, like yeah. in the rock. <laughs> that is just don't uh, uh, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. Keep all the foreign objects like needles and whatnot out of the yeah. heart. Out of the heart. But yeah, right. you want to go for the meaty part yeah. of the thigh. Meaty part you of the thigh. You go right through the pants, right through everything. It's spring yeah. loaded, injected, and yeah. everybody carried uh, three kits. Um, <clears throat> the filters, you know, they come vacuum sealed in a can like this, and you just kind of keep this stuff readily available. You want to keep them as fresh and completely unused for as long as possible because they do expire. Mm -hmm. They do expire. And this is it's definitely, you want that filter to work. <laughs> yeah, and then there were different, uh, different levels of mop gear as we called it. Mm -hmm. So you have to go Full regalia, every single piece of kit. You've got the gloves, you've got the uh, the outer booties that go over the top of your shoes or boots or whatever you're using. You have to go full, full, full regalia or they would um, reduce it down to where Two. guys were wearing, you know, like rubber painter's gloves on their hands and they just had the gas masks and um, maybe you just have your uh, atrophied. Well, it depends on the threat because, mm -hmm. you know, if someone hits you with anthrax or, uh, 
you know, mustard gas, chlorine, something like that. Mm -hmm. That that can all be filtered through here. You're just, you're just saving your eyes and your uh, and your lungs. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about VX and some other the, the more uh, you know, advanced, <laughs> yeah, advanced yeah. exotics, uh, you know, the size of a pin touches your skin, you're done. You lock mm -hmm. up, and you know that's what that's what this was for. Uh, the atropine, I guess, blocked it, and the two pam chloride actually relaxed your muscles because the other one would lock yeah. you up. So, so yeah. this is the, the hood. It wasn't going to be fun no matter what. And you could take the hood, you could roll this up inside out so that you could put your face in it and then roll the hood over the top. Sometimes we ran with these, sometimes we didn't. Again, it just based on uh, threat level. My only um, experience with actual WMD came long, long after the invasion. It was uh, during the Islamic State snafu mm -hmm. where they were allowed to just run the roost and they literally were putting chlorine and mustard in their munitions. Mortars, Katusha rockets, IEDs. And during that time, you know, President Trump hadn't taken office yet, so these guys were running the show and they were able to effectively engage areas that we were coming in and out of. There were no boots on the ground back in those days, so it was kind of hard to complain. But how we would generally run our rigs in that environment was on a pistol belt. I put the blower, I put the uh, syringe kit, just like this one. And then I had an old uh, charge pouch that I would put the gas mask in. Um, if memory serves, we may, I don't think I had the hood, but I think some guys did have the hood on their kits. I liked the pistol belt because you have your plate, you have your gun belt on, you have your plate carrier on. This just kind of went right across the middle, you know, across your kidneys mm -hmm. and you could still get to all your kit. You could still transition to your pistol. You could still do your, your job. threat level was no shit. It was the, the, the more crude. Uh, yes, you know. yes. So this was, a, you know, a Barbary state of retards, you know, yeah. the AQI element in Al Ambar during the OIF war became ISIS um, because they were allowed, I don't know, it's a long story. <laughs> but um, we were basically in like a World War I stalemate with a Barbary state that was firing like early to mid Cold War munitions at us. And I mean, we're gonna have another video about the absurdity of that particular chapter of military history and what we had to do to get around all the BS to kill every, kill people. But um, this is how I ran my CBR kit. I wore just plain Jane uh, equipment. And then as needed, I would throw this on. We kept these in our vehicles. Um, we were not required to wear them at all times, but it was just in case, like a lifesaver on the side of a boat, you know, or the side of a pool. It was a, just kind of a, a just in case. And sometimes rounds would land and you'd see like weird clouds, you know, brownish yellow or white and um, you just avoid them, just run away from them. That was kind of the primary tactic, not even putting this shit on, but just running away. Because it had a very limited amount they could put in those crude, non-purpose-built delivery systems. Yeah. Um, I even, I never saw it, but I even heard that they were putting chlorine in mason jars with grenades and dropping them from drones. Yeah. I'd heard all kinds of TTPs like that. I, I, uh, the only enemy drones I saw were fixed wing and they were using them as forward observers that were probably going to shoot gas. But, you know, it's another story yeah. for another day. Um, but, yeah, this is generally how I ran it. I liked it this way. Um, it was out of the way. I could go back and forth getting in and out of vehicles. I could wear this thing and it wasn't too bad. But this is just kind of a battlefield adaptation. You just go through your kit, see what you have, and you make it work. Yep. And then we also had the added, you know, you guys weren't too concerned about the cleanup. Mm -hmm. We were because if we, oh, yeah, we did went that in, we'd have to get yeah. I mean, you, I'm sure you went through the mm -hmm. training, but we went through it. The uh, cutout training, yeah. The cutout training. So you'd go on an op, yeah. Then you'd come back. You'd be isolated, and they had a phase line system set in place. So the first phase line, they'd have tarps out, and you drop all your guns on mm -hmm. this tarp, and then you go over to another tarp and you take off the, all your radios. Or maybe your helmet with your nods. Yeah. The it, stuff it, that they wanted to keep. It, it was set up like that. And then, uh, so the first stuff that you drop, the stuff you want to keep, mm -hmm. they would come along and just spray it off with uh, chlorine and, and bag it up and just try to kill whatever was on there. And then you went to the next station where mm -hmm. they started 
taking off yeah. everything. The last station. And, and they, oh, they made you go forward. Yeah, into the wind. Yeah, into the wind, baby. <laughs> you always check the wind. Okay, yeah. well, our direct, wind direction is this way. You want all that stuff blowing this way. Everybody that's scrubbing you off has the same mop gear on mm -hmm. to protect them. And when you finally get to the last station, you're stepping out of your shoes and they're taking the mask off and all that just goes into something to either gonna we were gonna leave it in the desert or burn it mm -hmm. uh and then you got on the helicopter and uh and you know waited to take off and then the the guys that were cleaning you up then cleaned themselves up you know hopefully they, they hadn't got any you know any on them because i mean you know the 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 rudimentary stuff the the mustard and chlorine mm -hmm. no big deal but dude, the, the, the high tech stuff, mm -hmm. whew, yeah, a little bit. It was terrible. Scary. So you want to make sure you get get out of there, and then uh, you just leave that stuff in the desert, and uh, you know, and get the hell out. Yeah. You know, we never had to actually do that for real. Thank God, because yeah. that, that was the last thing that we wanted. But so was, who's to say it was going to work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, well, we're going to find out. Yeah. I mean, we, we would test with simulants. I would like spray you down with a, with this goo, right, and mm -hmm. then. After you got all cut out, they'd you know, run you over, and you know I'd like to say I never had a little bit of smudge right down the back of my neck, but it happened more than once. So you know, so that had that been real, yes, you know, I wouldn't be here talking to you. <laughs> yeah, the measure of success for training for us, they used um, CS grenades, and they also used pepper spray. So if they wanted to check integrity of how things were working, not just when you first put it on, but you go do a full mission, you go do iteration training, and then they just pick people who hadn't been in the military as long as the other people, <laughs> and they would just spray them down and see how see what happened, just see what you know, just, just see how this goes. All right, new guy, it's your turn. Yeah, we were out on SCI when I was a new guy. And this is before they built the big South Mount town, but they did have little villages and houses and little targets and things That's around. San Clemente Island. Yeah, San Clemente Island. I didn't, I didn't say, uh, you said SCI. Sorry. You, I know what you meant. San Clemente <laughs> Island. And uh, a lot of MarOps training out there, but we did um, WMD, CBR uh, training in every block. We had to put the stuff on. So we had a uh, gas mask appreciation evolution where myself and other guys who are still pretty new to the Navy got um, mustered and they were like, hey, in this particular house over here, there are these big rocks. They're like the size of soccer balls, basketballs, and they're painted blue. And we need you guys to go in there and each come out with one. So I think you can handle that. And it was getting dark. We're like, well, yeah, can I bring a flashlight? It's like, yeah, you can, but you're not gonna need it. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> so you run in there and as soon as we, we go in, I mean, they're just chucking CS grenades and just spraying OC, like spray through the windows. Oh, you know, man. as long as they can handle, then they run off and you run in there and you're just like, blah, blah, blah. And you like eventually you find these blue, you can't even tell they're blue at this point. They're just big rocks that shouldn't be in the middle of these rooms. So you're like picking up this soccer ball rock. He's like running into the walls, like running out like, blah, blah, and just drop it down like, God, good job boys. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Training is adjourned. <laughs> let's get, let's light the, let's light the lamp. Yeah. But yeah, they, uh, they found lamp. ways, you know, to try to condition you. Coach had mentioned um, live fire, getting CS during live fire. Same thing, same ULT. We were out at Nylon, full live fire night runs. And there was this channelized area we had to go through between two hills to get to the next area. And so that's where they hit us. Yeah. Just CS grenades everywhere. I've got a freaking. 762, like machine gun, Mark 48, can't see anything. There's freaking rounds. Oh, man. It, uh, so if you are a trainer and if you are trying to get people ready to, to uh, use this stuff and be in these environments, please don't do any of the things I just said. Um, I don't think it would really help yeah. in the long run, but you know, those were the teams in those days. And I uh, would Hopefully train for we, we've gotten smarter with yeah. how we're using it. And you know, you're trained for what you're, you know, what you want to get, right? So. Yeah. You know, adding adding the stress of of CS in the air is effective, uh, but it can rapidly degenerate into uh, just a, a torture session. So, you know, just be aware. Anyway, guys, hey, if you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, and leave us some comments. All right, this is uh, Coach Endor, out.